cut your losses and extricate yourself from the bidding And tell your friends that you could if you wanted to And tell yourself that it's strong to make a hard call And if you want Lavendi wins the derby, Trapeze Artist wins the TJ and a little bit earlier, it was El Dorado dreaming winning the Sires. We get to the Doncaster, the star Doncaster mile over 1,600 metres, Group 1. Riding change on the bottom one, 16 D'Argento. Corey Brown replaced by Andrew Atkins. He rides it at 51 kilos. Darren, the Doncaster is only moments away. Well, the way the day's gone, I feel I should be tipping endless drama, uh, but such is not the case. I think Kamantari's the P here drawn well and I'm sure that Abdullah will want to use the gate. Lanciato's a great roughie to include at 20 to 1. A happy Clapper will run his usual on this race and Invincible Gem I think will get a very forward spot which could be a big advantage in this year's Doncast but I think the cream will rise to the top with a three-year-old Colt Kemantari. Our manning out is brought to you by Harvey Norman. Experience the best and there is Humidor with those earmuffs on. Mark Zara, he's looking for a Group 1 double, and Darren Weir. Yeah, and under, under those pre-race earmuffs, is a, the blinkers are back on him today. He's a class horse. He hits this race third up off a Group 2 win. You go back to the Cox Plate when they first put these blinkers on him, and he really stretched winks there that day. So he just needs them to open up at the right time, and he's right in this race on class alone. You would think from that gate he's going to attempt to be a little bit closer in the run, so that's really going to pay into his favour on a day like today. He seems to parade well. I haven't seen him um, at all this preparation or even last preparation, but uh, he looks to me as though he's happy and he seems to be keeping it all together. Stable mate is Tosin Stardom with Craig Williams. Look, he's a seven-year-old stallion with a bit of a mind of his own, but he's a very talented horse. Obviously, he's got that patchy form and he, he's needing to bounce back from a disappointing run last time, but a trip away may turn him on and he, he's got the ability to do some Surprise. And he has got the looks to match as well. He's a really well put together uh, stallion. He's really well um, conditioned. He's very uh, filled out in the way he looks as well. So he's clearly really ready for this mile. Three is Happy Clapper, Pat Webster and Blake Shin. Well, he appears to be going as well as ever, um, has a bit of weight, but has the right uh, the right lead-ups under his belt and he has the luxury of the inside draw. The, the Clapper will be there somewhere in the finish for sure. Look, I think he's a, as good as he's ever been in previous preparations preparations that I've assessed him. He's absolutely flying on the track and his looks have been impeccable all campaign. Four is endless drama, Glenn Schofield, Chris Waller. Month and a trial since the last run. This has been his target race all along, but he's run into a hot race. He looks great and he couldn't look any better than he is presented in today. When Chris Waller has a plan with his horses and there is a grand final with them, he presents them in this order and I think he is a great each way chance. Five is prized icon, Ben Millam and Chris Lees. Also blinkers back on, back to a mile on the dry suits, but still just needs a length or two improvement. Yeah, yeah, he look, he's a horse that um, is probably better over the 2,000 metres, but back in trip, this is a stiff mile. He also parades perfectly, which he has done all preparation. He's just at the top of his game. Crack me up, number six, Jason Collard on board for Bjorn Baker. Yeah, both runs back are great, and back to handicap conditions with 53 kilos here is ideal. Um, and he's a track specialist, two for two here. Yeah, he's been keeping his condition on him quite nicely. He's obviously had the change of trainers at the start of this preparation, and um, he, look, he still looks really well. He's just going to be given these a start. Invincible gem number seven, Chris Lees, Michael Walker. Uh, look, she's out of the right lead-up. Another who's, you know, back from two runs back wait for age. And, uh, look, I, I wouldn't treat her too lightly. She loves this track and distance. Yeah, I think she parades as well as I've seen her in previous runs. She hasn't made any improvement. Um, she's just maintained her condition, which is a good sign. Number eight. Tom Melbourne, Chris Waller, Karen McAvoy. Karen and Tom could be a match made in heaven. He's stretching right out in the yard here, really, really well in himself. He'll be competitive again here. He's uh, run second in all his three runs here. Surely it's just about his turn. <laughs> he's very bright, isn't he? And he, uh, look, he's no oil painting, I've got to admit, but he's, what you see of him today, he looks great. He's very healthy, as you would expect. This is his target all campaign, and he's progressing well. Kimantari, the favourite the three-year-old, Britton Avdala, James Cummings. He's a deserved favourite. He, he's put the man Ramwick uh, Group 1 win uh, over a mile on the board in the Guineas. He's got acceleration, a good weight for age lead up there. Maps well, has to be hard to beat. Yeah, right weight. 
nice gait and is just assured of getting that beautiful run. He has an amazing turn of foot. He looks a million dollars. He's obviously the horse that they've all got to run down. Coming through number 10, Tim Clark, Chris Waller. Another one peaking at the right time. He's had the right prep. Sure to have his supporters. No, no, no knock on his form from a nice draw. I thought he was um, actually needed the run last start, even though he won. I said he was going to take some improvement. So he's a, a, certainly an improver in my eyes in his fitness. Number 11, Lanciato, Mark Newnham and Rachel King. He's had a month in a trial since uh, showing an electric turn of speed winning at Newcastle. He's absolutely flying this horse and has to be the best roughy on dry going here. Looks absolutely perfect in his condition, as you would imagine. He's got the best turn of foot in the race. He's just going to be spotting these lot of starts, so he's going to have to have an exceptional turn of foot to be able to win this. Here's Egg Tart, number 12, Chris Wallop and Craig Newitt. Blinkers go on, disappointing in the cool mile more after a good first start. Run, run, probably once it wet at this level. Yeah, you would think the Blinkers would hopefully make a little bit of a change to her. She's uh, parading just as well as I've seen her in previous runs, but I, I just don't think that's good enough at this stage. Should get a shot of our beaching in the tunnel here. Number 13, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Michael D on board. Yeah, look, he, he loved getting control last week and, uh, and when he was back into the winner's circle. Uh, look, you can never doubt Gay in these big Ramwick miles. Yeah, I think he's very similar to how we saw him when he won um, over the 2,000 metres. He's maintaining his condition. He couldn't um, get any fitter. He was pretty much rock-hard fit last start. Yeah, Gay's won seven. Don Castles looking for eight. Adrian Bott, a partner in training, uh, looking for his first. Now, Mr Seawolf is about to be seen as they make their way up to the top of the tunnel. Mr Seawolf is Jay Ford, Chris Waller. Yeah, look, he, uh, I reckon he's, he's uh, he got his foot right on the till, but maybe in something a little bit easier than this. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Ron. What about cool chap Corey Parrish on board for Hayes Dabening. Well, it has to be underrated with the form around Numidor last start, um, uh, but he's a hard horse to catch. A third run in, so he's on the app. I haven't seen him in previous starts, so I can't really give you a comparison, but he presented as well as you would expect for a horse to run in a Group 1. OK, and uh, Dargendo is now Sam Clipperton replace... Uh, sorry, not Sam... I'll tell you why I thought it was Sam Clipperton <laughs> and why I'm saying Sam Clipperton. Um, it's Andrew Atkins, but he's wearing Sam's strides, his pants. Uh, there are a light pair of uh, breeches and he was on the scales trying to make at least 51 and he's been able to do that by borrowing Sam's pants so they're the lighter set. Yeah well he's had a ride on him two starts back in the round with Guinea so he, he, quite, he knows the horse or he's no he has to ride him too. It's not ideal it's not an ideal setup. a new jockey you know in the, in the 24th hour you know the last minute of the race uh, but he's a very promising three-year-old he showed his strength winning the Rose Hill Guineas. He sets up well and uh, he'll be finishing hard. The Pick of the Yard, brought to you by the dependable Isuzu D-Max. Go your own way. Pick of the Yard, I have to go with endless drama on top. I thought he paraded in absolutely fantastic order. I'm obviously really concerned about Kementari. He didn't uh, put a foot wrong in the parade, and he paraded just fantastically as well. So, look, I like those two horses from the yard. Just a quick comment on Dargento. He um, was a little bit fresh in the parade ring. He was really full of himself. He's obviously stepping back from the 2,000 metres to the mile, so they freshened him up nicely. But uh, I thought he paraded quite well too. But endless drama on top for me, please. Late mail here, 9, 3, 1 and 8. I want to be with the favourite here, Kementari. Just his acceleration, no weight. He maps perfectly, hard to beat. Uh, happy clappers, he's danger. I like the rider form. And these two, two horses excelled there. Humidor, the, uh, the unknown Melbourne visitor here. He's certainly a class act if he gets the brakes in the run. And look out, Tom Melbourne doesn't shock everyone here. 9, 3, 1 and 8. Right, well, Kementari is the favourite. Well, there's your two favourites. Kementari, the nine, Happy Clapper, the three. Great work by the camera boys there to get that uh, in the frame. Kementari, the 320 favourite for the Star Doncaster Mile here. Off a high of 380 this morning. Did get into around about 310, now at 320. Happy Clapper on the second line of betting is uh, basically been 5 or 550 right throughout the day. Then we go to Dargento, the 16, 7 out to 850. Humidor's the next pick at 12. Tom Melbourne's at 16. Coming through's at 19. Lanciato, the next pick at 21. But very, very little movement in the market as Happy Clapper goes into the stalls. Greg? Well, the last two editions. Andrew Ackland.
Hawkins has been a late pickup ride on Dargento. Of course, Hugh Bowman had this uh, that fall on performer in the Todman earlier on Randwick Guineas Day, and Andrew Atkins found himself on uh, Dargento, and here he is again replacing the injured Corey Brown. Here's Humidor about to walk in for Darren Weir. He won his first Group One in Sydney a couple of weeks ago with Galo Chop and now he's looking for a big Ramwick mile. There's coming through Chris Waller. He's won six Doncasters in a decade. A win with any one of his horses today would equal Gay and TJ at seven. Gay's looking for a history-making eighth in the Doncaster with our Beatsum. So 16 runners at the famous mile, Duff. Oh, always an exciting race. Uh, can't wait to see how it unfolds. Uh, Tom Melbourne to go forward. How far forward is he going to go? We're about to find out. Coming through, Dojento goes in. This is the Star Doncaster Mile, worth three million dollars. Here's Darren Flindell for the call. Just to move forward. So we're down to the last three now. Eggtart blinkered today for the first time. She's at big odds in the market. They're just working on coming through at the moment. Tim Clark's mount, and I think they've got him in now. So Mr. Sea Wolf and Toast and Stardom are the last two to move forward for the Star Doncaster. $3 million in prize money. Toast and Stardom's right. Mr. Sea Wolf up to the outside. And we're ready to go now. This is it. The Doncaster here at Royal Roundwick. Stand by for this year's edition. Starter about to send them on their way. Racing, Tosin started and hopped up in the air at the start. He's going to settle last. Mr. Seawolf taken back and Dargento as well. Happy Clapper jumped away swell. So did Kevin Tari. Our beats him though, an invincible gem are rolling into forward position. So the two favourites are right there early. Endless drama prominent, followed by Tom Melvin going forward. Tom into a forward position on the outside. Then coming through from prized icon, cool chap. Humidor about midfield, followed by Egg Tart. Then Tosin started and he recovered for a slow beginnings there. For the back to crack me up, Mr. Seawolf, Lanciato, and Dargetto's back last of all. Tom Melbourne moved around the outside to go and join our beats him in the lead. It's on at the 800 metres. Invincible Gem, Happy Clapper with nice runs behind. Followed by coming through, Kemantari, one off the fence. Prized icon further back with endless drama. Then cool chat from Humidor. Egg tart, toast and start and crack me up from Lanciato. Mr. Seawolf and Dargetto's last 500 metres to run. Our beats him and Tom Melbourne having an arm wrestle for the lead. Pulling out now is Invincible Gem. Coming through. Happy Clapper back to the inside. Kevin Tari looking for gaps as they come up the rise. Happy Clapper hard up the fence. Happy Clapper joins our beats and Tom Melbourne. Coming through. Kevin Tari needs to lift. Happy Clapper the 175. Trying to fend them off. Happy Clapper in front and coming through our beats and Lanciato. Flashing home late, followed by Tom Melbourne, Humidor, Lanciato from Cool Chap, Kemantari, Eggtart next from Crack Me Up, Prized Icon, Endless Drama, Invincible Gem, Mr. Seawolf, Tosum Stardom was last to finish. The well, the journalists, won't, the journalists won't have trouble writing this story. He's a popular horse, Happy Clapper, the people's horse. And Pat Webster, he's done the Epsom Doncaster double. He hasn't dodged winks. He's never run away from her. He's run second in two Doncasters. But today, he claims one, and it's all his. Yeah, and what a ride by Shin. He had the barrier, but he just rode the rail. He got the run at the right time. A dominant win uh, coming through. He's peaked up on the right day. Uh, beat some leads and, and fights on running the race of his life, the Gay Waterhouse uh, runner there. And uh, the three-year-old has run a terrific race, Dargento. Uh, you'd have to say the three-year-old Kemantari, the other one, uh, was a little disappointing there. But all honours, a dominant display from the Clapper. Happy Clapper. Here are the numbers. Three Happy Clapper. Blake Shin, Pat Webster. Defeats 10 coming through. Chris Waller and Tim Clark. 13, R. Beatsum, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bot Michael D. And 16, Dargento runs fourth. Fifth home was number eight. Are you coming on? Tom Melbourne. Happy Clapper. Blake Shin. 
an Epsom Doncaster double winner now. And here is the winning rider, Blake Shin. Good work, Blake. Great work. How does that feel? Oh, that feels amazing, you know. Just wonder, Donnie, Bernie, watch this race for so many years, growing up and to finally win it. Woo! And on the clapper. And on the people's chant, the clapper. He's so brave, this horse. He's so honest. He's tenacious. He's tough. And uh, well done to Pat Webster and his team. You know, um, you know, this is what it's all about. Just want to thank my family, Mum, Lee, all my, all my friends. You know, you know, they give me so much confidence when, when I ride, even when I doubt myself. And uh, you know, this is what it's all about. And uh, to win a Doncaster and put my name in history books with this horse, it's. Uh, you know, this horse deserves it and it's very special. So do you. Go and enjoy it. Thanks, Ben. Cheers. Good boy. So Happy Clapper takes the Doncaster in front of coming through and he's coming back now. Part of the story of Happy Clapper is that he's never run away from Winx. Pat Webster has always been comfortable to take her on, knowing what the result was going to be. He's run second in two Doncasters. He's run placings in, in Group 1s. He got that Group 1 in the Epsom and he got one in the Canterbury Stakes. But to, to win a Doncaster, one of the great races on the Australian turf, could there be a horse more deserving? No, there's not. Some horses, they say, Winx breaks their hearts. But Winx is tough this fellow up. Uh, she's toughened him up for a, uh, the big occasion here today and uh, he is a, 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 a deserved winner. There's no doubt about it. He's He's been fantastic all the way through. Uh, he, he, you know, he had the wink for, winks form and the driver coming into this race and he comes out way on top. OK, the time is 1.33.17, just outside the track record. Ike's Dream holds it at 1.33.13. It's the fastest Doncaster in history. Belmira Ladd has held this Doncaster record since 1979 at 133.7. Uh, he's run 133.17. That Belmira Ladd was a track record that stood for a long time, but Duff, there, there you go. That just tells you how big a performance it was from this horse. Well done. Well done, Paddy. Yeah, Channel 7 pushing you, mate. You're my man. You're my man. <laughs> I don't know. You're we'll, my man. We'll wait, mate. Yeah, yeah. Do I come tomorrow? Do you want to come? Yeah. You want me to yeah, pick you yeah, up? Yeah, pick me up at the gate, RD. I'll be there. All right, you're Humpty on the show. Humpty Dumpty. Christian said I look like Humpty Dumpty on the wall. I'll be Humpty Dumpty again. You know what you look like, but a group one winning trainer. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, look, um, look, you and I was just talking about Clint and Ray and everyone's just stuck by me with this horse. And it's just been fantastic. Yeah, he's just a great horse, isn't he? You've been part of Ramwick for how long now? Too long. <laughs> 40 years? Oh, 50. Yeah, 50, 50 years. Yeah, since I was 15, yeah. And now you've got an Epsom and a Doncaster. Oh, it's just a, and a Canterbury. And a Canterbury. Yeah, it's just little... amazing. But the Doncasters, you know, as I said to Clint Payne yesterday, give me a race, you can have your slipper, you can have, honestly, you can have your cox plate, but when we're kids, might have been because we drank at the Doncaster, but no, the Doncaster's the way she might have went. Now, I've done it. So to anyone at Randwick, this is the iconic race, isn't it? It is for us kids that grew up here. Um, um, you know, we used to go to breakfast up on the hill and everything, every time we, you know, you always speak about the Doncaster and here we are today. But we've got, I don't know, a dozen journalists here who are going to write wonderful stories about Happy Clapper. Yeah, and so they should. And what, but what do you say? How, how do you describe him? How do you sum him up? Well, you, you know, you don't use the word champion, but look, if you took the mare away, look what he's done, you know, and uh, he's just an amazing horse. And um, for Jacob Gilchrist, who looks after him on the ground, and oh, you've got to mention these people. Ainsley Fox rides him every morning, straps him today. Mate, they, they deserve all the credit. Just all I do is put, give, ring, ring them and give them the instructions. Right. And they listen. Yeah. Um, you haven't dodged Winks. You, no. You've never run away from her. No. Duff just made a point. Might have toughened him up. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, we look, we, we, uh, we nurse him after he runs against her and we give him time to get over the run and it's just, he's just a great horse, you know. Are you going to be back here in seven days' time to take her on in the Queen Elizabeth? Well, it's 570 for running second and, jeez, mate, I'm going that bad. The answer left home. I've got to come back, I'm telling you. <laughs>